The latest government data continues to reveal that many of us are missing out on vital vitamins and minerals each day. Vitamins and minerals which help keep our bodies healthy. These findings are supported further by more new research just out and the people behind this have suggested a solution. Something that when integrated into your diet, whether you're a toddler or reaching your later years, may help to bridge some of our dietary shortfalls. No, it's not tablets nor a series of injections or the latest fad diet, but something far more straightforward. Here to tell us more and explain what nutrients we're missing out on are the researchers themselves from this latest study news, Professor Robert Pickard and Dr. Carrie Ruxton. So in what way are children's diets short on vital vitamins and minerals and what can we do? For infants and preschool children, studies continue to show that diets in this age group are low in vitamins A, D, iron and zinc. One study, in fact, found that the diets of 18-month-old infants was low in many of these nutrients, and similar findings have come from another study involving infants aged 12 months. With younger school-aged children, research again reveals a very worrying picture with diets low in vitamin A, magnesium, iron and zinc. In fact, the latest government research, the National Diet and Nutrition Survey, when you look at four to ten year olds, revealed that girls had inadequate vitamin A intakes and also one in ten girls had inadequate zinc intakes. Vitamin D is also a massive issue for this age group with average intakes less than half of the recommended level. Teenagers' diets don't fare much better as they too are low in key nutrients such as vitamin A, vitamin D, iron, magnesium, zinc, selenium and potassium. Vitamin D insufficiency is widespread amongst UK children and there is unfortunately a higher risk of deficiency in ethnic minority children. Nutrients in red meat have got important roles in growth and development for both children and teenagers. For example, vitamin A is needed for eye function and immune health, zinc is needed for growth and iron for brain development. A lack of these nutrients in early childhood could affect health in ways that just can't be compensated for later in life. So it's a good idea then that red meat is included within a healthy balanced diet from weaning onwards. In fact, emerging research suggests that including red meat in the weaning diet could relate to improved health outcomes such as reduced obesity and better cognitive development and that just has to be great news. So in what way are adult diets short on vital nutrients and how can we bridge these nutrient gaps? Iron appears to be a real issue for women in the reproductive years and about a fifth of women fail to meet the minimum daily recommendation for iron. Iron deficiency can also impact on women's cognition, emotions, quality of life and even their behaviour. Underconsumption of key vitamins and minerals which support long-term health is a widespread problem across the life cycle. However, it's notable that many of these missing nutrients are present in red meat, such as iron, vitamin A, vitamin D, selenium, magnesium, potassium and zinc. It would seem then, from our early years into our adult life, we all seem to be missing out on vital vitamins and minerals. But is it the same picture for those of us in our later years? Here to tell us more is Professor Picard. After the age of 60, it's much more difficult for uh, individuals to absorb nutrients from the gut. So it's important to include some foods in a balanced diet that are especially rich in vitamins and minerals. Uh, and of course, red meat is one of those foods. Minerals such as potassium, uh, zinc and magnesium, uh, we know are tend to be relatively low in the diets of elderly people and so meat being a rich source of those nutrients uh, is a particularly good food to include. The government uh, has an advisory committee called the Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition and this gives advice which is uh, acted upon by the Department of Health and by the Food Standards Agency and they uh, base their advice on scientific evidence rather than uh, particular ideas and mantras that are abound in the popular press. And if you look at their recommendations, you will see that they have a very clear place for red meat in a healthy, balanced diet. And uh, you might reasonably expect uh, to eat up to 70 grams of red meat per day and up to 500 grams uh, of red meat over a, um, a seven day period. One of the other problems that you have, of course, as you get older, is that you tend to lose muscle mass. 
a condition that we call uh, sarcopenia. And uh, there is no doubt that having a good supply of suitable proteins, uh, as you have in red meat, uh, will help you to uh, cope as well as you can uh, with that particular condition. One of the important things uh, about old age is that people accept declining cognitive function thinking that it's a consequence of their aging processes. Whereas really, most people shouldn't lose more than 5% of their cognitive ability up to the age of 80, even though you might lose your ability to recall memories uh, much earlier than that, from about 35 onwards. Now, when we look at meat, we find that minerals such as zinc and potassium and magnesium are all really important to the correct functioning of nerves and muscles. And we have good research to show that if you can keep those particular nutrients high within your body, then your brain will be able to repair itself as damage occurs, uh, particularly during old age. Vitamin B12, which is present in red meat, but not present in ordinary vegetables, is particularly important for the repair of the nervous system. So red meat has a serious part to play in your diet, no matter what stage of your life you're at. It's been on our dinner menu since the dawn of mankind, and it looks like it's here to stay.